Hey guys, we're going to talk about what I feel is probably, um, now there's many things that you could label this, I guess, but one of the things that I think is probably the most overlooked, um, maybe the number one overlooked uh, spring habitat improvement that you could do on your property. And what I'm referring to, guys, is a water hole. The water holes or the water sources are a huge, huge um, add addition uh, to the property. But sadly, like I said, most of the time they're overlooked. Um, if if they're not overlooked, what sometimes what I'm seeing is folks going um, and building uh, kind of uh, ponds without you know really thinking about how the pond is going to be a huge water source, um, you know for for deer because it's more stagnant uh than you know a flowing creek a lot of folks it would shock you a lot of folks that i go on properties uh you know they we start talking about water holes and, and where to put your water tanks and and your water sources or if there's a pond you know next to a stand location and they they look at me like you know you're crazy well i've got creeks and i've got rivers and all over all over my property we don't we don't need water holes though they're not going to be that attractive well, you know, they are, they're very attractive. And once they implement those, it's shocking to most folks how, um, how much of a draw they can be. Uh, deer do not like to water out of cold, uh, running, you know, uh, creeks or, or bleeders or, um, you know, uh, spring heads and stuff like that. They do not, uh, now if a spring head makes a pool, obviously, and it's a little stagnant. Yes, you can, you know, a lot of, a lot of times you can find those deer watering at the head of those, but, the majority of that is stagnant water opposite completely opposite of what you know in our world we especially when we're uh you know if you're an athlete or or you know even out in the woods like i was today you know cutting in doe bedding areas and working first thing i'm going for is cold water right and that's not the case with deer it, they they like that stagnant water which raises a big concern the big concern to to watch is when you implement a water hole one make sure it's near a stand location just do not put willy-nilly uh, water holes all over the property and just to add water or value to the property and not be able to hunt over them it's a huge tool it's just another tool in your in your toolbox uh, to have in your arsenal if you will to add at especially bow stands um, and you know cooler temperature stands especially maybe if there's it's that north or northwest uh, set um, that you can take advantage of those those deer the end of October uh, you know drinking out of those sources but like I said what raises the problem is this most folks not most some folks will do is uh, go in and make pond, little ponds you know water holes if you will natural water holes but the problem with that is, guys, is whether you are you have a spot to dig them in uh, because your water table is friendly, let's say, uh, right there, you know, reachable, or you can put a liner in and then, you know, cover the liner back up with mud or whatever the case is, and it fills in, it, it creates, it does hold water. problem with it is, guys, it, is it's mud all the way around it. And uh, Lord willing, you never have this problem. Sadly, I've seen it firsthand on multiple properties around the country, um, dating back to when I was guiding in the Midwest, and EHD and blue tongue are no joke. It's not It's not a joke. It's not something to mess with. It's definitely not something to promote. Um, a lot of it, I think, gets promoted by accident. I don't think any of us would intentionally put a water hole in thinking, hey, if, if EHD sets into our area, you know, we're going to kill off a bunch of deer. That's not the intention, obviously, but does it happen? And it, it happens a lot. So um, I will really encourage you to not overlook this step of water holes uh, here in the spring, but I also encourage you to use your head about what water source you are going to create. Um, I'll show you here a couple of spots that we're going to promote uh, and put water holes. And, uh, you know, they're, they're usually you know intersections where you have a, a cruising corridor coming into the transition uh, or you know um, kind of away from a food source and away from maybe on a high dry ridge right somewhere where you can spread that uh, promote that line of movement not next to your minerals not next to your food sources uh, you know the only thing that we tie to these water holes uh, to aid to them are obviously our licking branches then there again make sure they're within 
archery if you're in a bow hunt over make sure they're within bow shot of that uh, of that stand uh, we've got three tanks uh, i'm just short of 75 acres here and uh, three water holes so how many water holes do you need it all depends on the lay of the land if it's flat and you got an 80 you might be able to get away with two of them depending on you know uh, creek shelves that are already there is there other, any other backed up water source anything like that guys uh, but kind of the rule of thumb is around 80 usually I see the most most common is about three and then you step up to like those 120s ones or 60s and stuff like that I start you know seeing more of a reason implementation to start putting those hundred uh, or the uh, 100 gallon tanks or 150 gallon tanks but I run about four of them per 160s kind of how just I don't know if that's just luck or if there's some science to that or acreage to that I don't know what that is but it seems like uh, through the the years of designing when I hit that uh, 160 mark is um, you know that that you know that hundred or that four uh, four tanks per property uh, starts fitting to that so looking forward to implementing all of these but like I said guys it's a huge I think it's a huge missed uh, opportunity uh, just remember um, a couple things to take from this video don't put them uh, you know, in a spot where you've already got your mineral, uh, only other thing that you want to put next to these, uh, licking or these water holes guys is a licking branch. Um, spread, spread that wealth out. If you will use the drawing power, uh, to these tanks along your, along your transition, uh, and along them lines of travel to promote that. Uh, and I think you'll be very happy. It's, uh, with the, you know, the outcome, I think it's a spot, like I said, is, uh, it's an opportunity uh, to put something there. Sometimes those those uh, line, you know, those uh, the line of travel gets kind of strung out, if you will. And these water tanks in the right location are a power, power, powerful, powerful piece of the puzzle. Uh, but like I said, if you're going to implement them, guys, probably the biggest connection to this video here is something to take away from this video is just that. Um, really look at. I'm going to put 150 gallon tanks in here. Um, just because you know so you don't have to fill them up as much 50s don't work 75s don't work hundreds work 120s work 150 better you want them deep you do not want them large a foot deep I know there's some manufacturers out there in the hunting industry uh, kind of like that buzzword you know let's throw a bunch of nonsense in the food bag of food plot a mix and and sell it because it sounds cool you do not want a shallow water tank the, the the shallower it is the the bigger the top of it is the more surface area you have the more it evaporates you want to use a rubbermaid uh, or livestock tank 100 120 150 gallon 170 gallon tanks depending on um, if you're traveling a lot to the property or something like that but I fill these guys I fill these uh, another thing to touch on there I guess is uh, I fill these water holes um, like to implement them obviously in the spring and then we fill them right initially after that and I check them in August make sure they're topped off in August I've got water holes guys that are three or four years old that I've never added an ounce of water to I will always go in uh, in the spring of the year and clean them out uh, take the take make sure you have critter sticks in them uh, one on each end critter sticks meaning so if something gets in there falls in squirrel mice whatever the case is uh, raccoons they can get out um, and, uh, so you put like a two or three inch log, leave it, you know, out of the top of the tank about a foot. So, um, you know, so they can, uh, latch onto it and crawl out. I, I usually run two per tank. Um, but you know, I, I clean the debris out, the leaves out, the longer them leaves sit in there, they turn the acidic, you know, and, and kind of make that water nasty. Uh, but there again, deer like that stagnant water, um, you know you don't have to clean them out but you'll you'll see um obviously if it's in a, an area where the, the you know the trees can get to it the leaves can get to it they'll fill up on you uh so keep them clean guys uh bury them just below the surface maybe an inch or two below the surface uh if you can find a spot where the uh, water is helping you fill it um you know or the uh, runoff the water running off the, the hill shelf or the hillside i guess i should say in a valley maybe or something like that that's filling it um, obviously that's just the good Lord helping you, uh, keep them full. But the, uh, the ending here to this one, guys, is use your head, make sure they're in the right spot so you can hunt over them, uh, make sure they're, they're filled going into season. And, and, uh, also like we, we said, I'd much rather see you use a tank than a dig a hole. And the reason for that is, is the mud, that midge and EHD that promotes EHD is, uh, lives in the mud and you don't have the mud. 
around the tanks when you have the tanks in a um, in a plastic uh, livestock water um, hole, if you will. The mud is dry around it, and that's not a concern. I think I think it's one of the craziest rules I've ever heard of, state of Illinois. If you're listening to this, uh, that you can't use water holes, promote water holes. It's that's crazy. You know, they they let folks dig water holes. Uh, to promote and promote a EHD, not intentionally, but you can't dig a water hole in and use it. Crazy. Uh, I don't. I don't know. That's uh, that's somebody with a you know overeducated, underskilled. Uh, obviously, has never been in the field and seen what this what this uh, is all about, right? But um, so use the water tanks, guys. Use your heads. Put them in. Get them in here early in spring, April, May. And uh, like I said, I think it's a huge missed over uh, overlooked uh, deal. A huge missed opportunity and uh, hopefully uh, this uh, this uh, kind of video sparks a little maybe you start looking into your designs and and finding out where those need to fit uh, to promote that line of travel thanks guys